that's one of the reasons we were set, we were writing this book. Of course, Jim and I are both post-war babies, and we said when we were growing up, we had a host of people to support, not just our parents, but our ball coaches, our postmen, uh, our teachers. They had some certain similar values that they instilled in us and saw as, as regular values. Now then, that's, of course, that's not the case, and there's no one to tell anybody that this is really wrong because we can't force our views on anybody that's that's a a real serious drift because if we can't speak i mean we've spent some time jim and i spent a lot of time talking about how the nazis came to power in germany one of the things that they did is they just made it impolite to criticize them and and that's kind of where we are you cannot ask questions about some of these left-wing things now pity the poor person who stands up and says that we ought to have virgins who, who get married, and no one should have intercourse before then. Because, I mean, practically no one says that. We even have a high school here in South Carolina that has a daycare center on campus. It's unbelievable. That's just and crazy. It's just, it's just gotten ridiculous. And one, we had a principal in this state who resigned because they tried to form a gay and lesbian club, and he said, I'm not going to support that as an official school function. Again, they said, you brought a suit, and he said, okay, I resign as a principal. But wow. Those kind of things are happening more and more, and it's a, just a, a decay in our culture that that's almost unconscionable. And and you're exactly right. I will say one thing to you, Paul, and I don't I don't say this casually. I'm, we we do Jim and I do a number of these uh, radio interviews, and but it, it is really talk radio that is one of the places where you do have freedom of speech. Right. Talk radio is one of the places where you can speak up about these things without fear of reprisal. Right. And um, you know. The, of course, the left makes fun of it, but they can't get the, any talk radio. Because only a few Supreme Court justices and some people in Hollywood and some people in the media and on academic campuses believe as they do. Right. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, they can't at this time. You know, there's there's a push to the fairness doctrine and other ways yeah. to try to take away the free market of ideas and to force uh, really muzzling conservative values to the airways. But it is. It's a very good forum, and that's why I'm in it. It's because I found it to be a place where I could get my conservative ideas and I could bring conservatives that had specialties such as yourself with these with these books to talk about it. And I think that the country is hungry for an outlet to renew itself back to these original values. I think I that this country it was, was based and its foundations are on traditional Christian values Correct. and that uh, it's the heart of what made us, has made us great and, uh, and you know, that people uh, at their foundations – Uh, believe in those values they may not articulate them they may not have and that's what's good about a book like yours it gives some articulation to be able to really put voice to these thoughts that we have these gut feelings that man where's the country going to or man what i'm seeing here in this media outlet or in this forum is so against what i believe or what i believe must be right and uh, so it's the beginning of that and that's why i think that it's good for a book like this and i would be uh, you know, pushing you in a direction to keep writing on this. Now, it looks like you have some other very interesting books that I'm going to have to get into as well that you've been writing. But, you know, let's, let's talk just for a moment about um, academia and uh, this uh, interesting world in which I'm living in, but you've lived in for even longer. Right. Um, how is it, what is it like to be an individual that writes conservative books, that writes uh, books on traditional values, uh, for a professor in academia? Well, Paul, you just better not ever expect to get asked to be a department head or a dean mm-hmm. or any academic position. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, my experience, I think probably the same thing can be said of anybody who stands up on Kansas State uh, campus, is that the students are with you. Their parents are with you. Most of the legislators and elected officials in a place like Kansas and South Carolina are with you. It's just that the administration, the people at the top, some of your colleagues are against you. The problem, as I see it, is this. If you come out with conservative values, say out of high school, and go to college, they're immediately moderated in most liberal arts classes. Mm -hmm. Then if you choose to go to graduate school and you pick a good graduate school, well, graduate degrees are mostly becoming a member of the club, and you mm-hmm. have to either be quiet or moderate your views to get a graduate degree. And 
then if you go out into the job market in academe and you're lucky enough to be hired as an assistant professor, you really have a 12-year march that, until you're a full professor before you can speak up. Yeah. And, you know, what I see is a lot of people just get worn down by the process. And they don't, you don't want to spend four or five years in graduate school and not get the degree, and so you keep your mouth shut. Right. Then when you get the degree, you, get t- you go out and you're seeking to get tenure after six years, you, you again keep your mouth shut. And that's unfortunate because at that point you're, you're required to publish so much. Right. So you've got to be a writing machine. And what do you write about that you can feel good about and not you know, inject some of yourself, your own values into But go ahead. Well, sometimes, I mean, some of these disciplines like psychology, sociology, and political science are so esoteric that by the time you finally get written, first, nobody reads it. And secondly, it's so divorced from reality, it's really no use. <laughs> I mean, I've written most of my books when I got to be a full professor because yeah. I was immune to any criticism. I, 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 that is so true. That is so true. I know where you're, uh, where you're coming from. And uh, it makes uh, sense, you know, but that's a long waiting period. That's yeah. a long uh, waiting period to have to stay uh, silent about that. And I've seen it in, ac- in academia. You know, I'm finishing a, a Ph.D. And, yeah. uh, in sociology. And, and yeah. I started out in crim- – uh, my master's and bachelor's are in criminal justice. I'm a former Kansas chief of police. And yeah. I, uh, I've seen lots of uh, what I call conservative professors in, in hiding, sort of. Yes, uh, laid right. back and you, you get the telltale signs that they understand uh, things that they don't articulate. It's a very, very interesting uh, concept. And it's very interesting for people to see how an individual uh, in academia or, or you know in other areas, how they live the conservative life and how they deal with it because it's not easy. It's no. not you're, – you're, stream- you're swimming against a stream, but the, I guess the, in the end – the uh, the question is, does the stream have to be going against you? And I, I really think that this country can take a shift back. There was a time when uh, when a lot of the things that are going on today would have been taboo. Right. And we have found ourselves uh, sliding into this shift that can be brought back. And I think it's a battle uh, that's uh, for the hearts and minds. I believe that we can win that by uh, having people come to the understanding, one of the conservative within them, and, and that these traditional values can be articulated by many and we can actually turn the tide. It's going to be hard because there are entrenched groups like the ACLU. There are, there are entrenched um, other entrenched uh, political parties uh, and uh, special interest groups that have to be overcome. But I'm optimistic. I'm well, you optim- know, Paul, I am too. I'm optimistic because of, of books like yours, David, and uh, that they are out there. And if I look at it, if people like you can stand up, then others will as well, and I stand in line with them. Well, I think you're, I think you're generally right. I mean, really, the left only has a lock on three institutions in American society, and that's Hollywood, the media, and academe. Now, those are significant institutions. I'm not trying to minimize them. Right. But, but you can't take the values you learned in a philosophy class or no offense to your discipline of sociology and really perform in the business sector or perform if you had to start a business or or you had to run a run a, an organization and you couldn't treat people like dirt you'd have to treat them with dignity and respect and you know and and people don't live the way that they're oftentimes taught in these very kind of unusual disciplines on, on college campuses and, and another thing that i think you should do when you finish your degree is just Go to war against the academy. I mean, I have found that uh, my colleagues don't necessarily agree with me, but they learn to respect you right? because they realize that you're articulate and you have these positions and they know where they come from. And, I mean, I try and write a lot. I wrote here in the school paper and Mm -hmm. just on our campus to try and speak against some of these these things. And I think, by and large, if we can get enough people doing this at different levels, I think we could really turn things around. Oh, I agree. I, I definitely agree, and I think this is a good start for it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking to David Woodard. He is the co-author of Why We Whisper, uh, Restoring Our Rights to Say It's Wrong. You can find this book at Amazon and as well as Barnes & Nobles and all your major book outlets. You can also find it at www.whywewhisper.com. We have it linked on our master website of conservative uh uh, politics here at www.ibbotsonusa.com so everybody can find it we're going to keep it up there and uh, for a long time David because we want people to be able to find this book